Smiley from the Energy Boutique with your energy and ascension forecast for Sunday, April 21st to Saturday, April 27th. Okay, so last week we were just bombarded with energy shifts on energy shifts on energy shifts, especially as we made our way through that first quarter moon in Cancer. And of course, if you've been watching the Schumann Resonance or you're on my Patreon and we kind of followed it together, you would know that we just had blast after blast after blast since pretty much this eclipse energy. And of course, we're still very much in that. That first quarter moon in Cancer Energy definitely shook up foundation, shook us up in ways that we weren't really prepared for, left us kind of disoriented, which of course is the name of game in eclipse and retrograde energies. We were preparing to shift out of Aries season into Taurus season. And of course, we did that earlier today here on the 19th. If you're in the live chat here Friday evening, first of all, thank you so much for being here. Secondly, we just shifted into this Taurus energy here earlier today. Drop me a line in the comments. Did you feel the shift? I sure did. I took a good look around, especially at my neighbors who decided to start kind of digging in the dirt, getting their garden prepared, and that couldn't be any more Taurus if it tried. So we're definitely all in alignment. The energy is definitely going to slow down. We're going to become a little bit more present. We have a lot of inner growth, inner work, inner love to do as we kind of switch, change, transform our physical realms around to start matching the inner vision, the inner goal, the inner dream that, of course, we are piecing together. The major event that technically speaking, if you're listening to me here Friday evening, hasn't even happened yet. We have Jupiter, the planet of growth, expansion, beliefs, abundance, and blessings coming together with Uranus in their major conjunction. First time in 14 years this is going to be popping off at 21 degrees here on Saturday, the 20th. And so we're definitely already in this energy. We've been in this energy within orb of it anyways, throughout the entirety of eclipse season. They are both very slow moving planets. So this is a direct aspect and we are definitely going to be feeling the reverberatory effects from this very beneficial, very positive, very encouraging energy over the next couple of weeks. And of course, over the next couple of weeks, we are going to see very clearly what this path, this plan, this strategy is actually going to mean for us in moving forward, especially where our long-term goals and visions are concerned. So this week, we're definitely going to be, again, kind of feeling all of these Jupiter and Uranus vibes. We have to expect the unexpected. There could be good news, good people crossing your path, good little glimmers of hope, of wishes, of dreams that are finally starting to actualize in our physical realm. But we're also going to be building towards that full moon in Scorpio energy popping off on the 23rd. And so, you know, full moon, there's going to be a full illumination of what? Well, shadow work. Our fears, our doubts, our insecurities are now going to be right in our face as we fully realize these new wants, new needs, new desires, new visions, new goals, new dreams. Every single time we level up, we have to adjust our boundaries and those boundaries come back to shadow work. That Scorpio energy is shadow work. It is change. It is transformation, especially in our inner realm where our emotions, our soul self is concerned. Definitely going to be super intense. And again, I'm going to encourage you to gain access to this moon guide that will be available for your listening pleasure, for your interactive pleasure as well as we kind of dissect the chart for the collective and apply it to your individual chart, would definitely recommend that you subscribe to that moon guide. That particular full moon in Scorpio is going to be clearing out a lot of the crud because whatever's left over as far as, you know, the aspects within ourselves that we're keeping around, that we're strengthening, that we're building upon, the Scorpio energy is going to allow us to remove the aspects of the shadow realm within us. And then whatever's left over, we're merging that back into a sense of wholeness, a sense of completion. And it's coming at a fine time because just a couple of days later, we're going to have the 
beautiful shift in energy when Mercury comes out of his retrograde and he finally goes direct. And of course, that's going to be taking place on the 25th. And this is going to be the last full week of Venus in Aries energy, Mars in Pisces energy, as we anticipate them both moving into their rulerships towards the end of the month, preparing us for what is going to be a crazy chaotic May, where we ask actually start seeing the physical changes in our physical realms and realities that of course got initiated with the energetic shift that we all just went through through eclipse season through this mercury retrograde so of course there's going to be a lot of highs a lot of lows everything in between but we are definitely starting to stabilize we are starting to think a little bit more clearly see the path plan strategy a little bit more clearly and therefore we are slowly but surely moving forward Forward. A lot to cover, especially where ascension symptoms are concerned. So before we jump into that list of ascension symptoms, just want to take a moment to thank you. I want to thank you for being here, for liking, for sharing, for commenting, for dropping those beautiful emojis in the comment section below. I want to thank you for your love, for your encouragement, for those of you that gave me some helpful tips, especially coming out of last week's rant about how YouTube is just trying to essentially kill my channel. Uh, still don't know what to do about it. Still kind of experimenting with a lot of the suggestions that y'all came at me with. Uh, haven't found a good solution as of yet, but I'm, I'm kind of happy to know that I'm not the only one, although it does make me sad that everybody else, these beautiful content creators are going through the same thing. However, um, you know, things have to be changing. Uh, not that I want to talk about this, but I noticed uh, on all the other platforms, there is a huge, huge infusion of AI. Don't know if you noticed, but on the Facebooks now, you got the whole Ask AI, the Ask Meta that just like takes over your whole search bar, uh, takes over your whole chat. Um, we're seeing it on Instagram as well. Hate these changes. Googled it this morning to see how I could disable them. And apparently you can't. And apparently over the last day or two where they implemented these changes, the Google results for how many people are looking to figure out how to shut this A off, the AI off, again, can't wait for Mercury to go got direct, side note. Um, but the Google searches are just like exponential at this point. And they're kind of saying that the more people that, you know, put into Google search, how to shut these things off or go into your settings and the help support center on these platforms and kind of complain about it. Hopefully they will give us an option to shut things off. I, for one, I mean, I can see the positives. I know where we're going. I know the different timelines that we have available to us and, and AI is very important to both. But again, I can see the pros and cons and I don't really think that pushing AI into everyone's life is necessarily the way to go. Um, I really am seeing the, I'm gonna say kickbacks in the good and not so good way of AI already. And even on my TikTok, and again, I'm not big on social media, but for you know the energy boutique and for business and for trying to get my message out and trying to keep everybody sane through these crazy, crazy times, I am on most of these platforms. And my TikTok went from like getting six, 600, 800 views each and every single day to 30. So something's going on. Something is just not right up in here. And so I'm not sure what it is yet, hoping to gain a little bit of clarity on that over the next week or so. But where I'm going with this is that I appreciate your love and support. It is you guys, you know, liking and sharing and commenting and dropping those emojis that keep me in the loop, that keep the algorithm going, that keep this channel alive. So that's why I take the time each and every single week to thank you for being here and thank you for contributing to pushing this message, pushing this information out into the world to those that need to see it. So thank you very much for that. Um, I also just want to remind you that we're in Taurus season now. If you haven't listened to the Taurus season Astro Forecast, that I published, I'm definitely going to recommend that you take a listen to that. I'm also going to recommend that you download the Taurus Season e-guide. And again, reminder, that Taurus Season e-guide is a, I'm going to call it tool, a resource 
for you to be referring back to each and every single time you see me kind of talk about an energy shift coming up or see that I publish a new video talking about a specific energy shift, that's when you should have this guide available to you and flip to this particular chapter in the guide and really allow yourself to align with the energies, capture what is going on in your life right now. This is literally the cheapest investment that you could possibly make in yourself, in your life. And trust me, from when I say that looking back on these particular e-guides are going to make a major, major difference in your life, you just have to trust the process. So I've made it as affordable as I possibly can um, in order for everybody to have access to this. And this should be your essential astrology Bible as we kind of move through each and every season and try to stay ahead of the energies. So of course you can download that from my website. And of course, if you are a bronze or silver tier on my Patreon, please check your community chat for that discount code to get 50% off. And those of you that aren't on Patreon as of yet, I would really encourage you to jump on over even as a free member and gain access to some free content over there. Um, that, you know, little previews of some paid content, little freebies here and there, definitely the place to be. All the information, all the workbooks, all the resources, all the videos that I create is being streamlined on my Patreon. So definitely would welcome you to jump over there. So with that being said, let's talk about some ascension symptoms that we can expect to feel as we move throughout this week. First of all, the Taurus energy is meant to slow us down, meant to kind of make us a little bit more present, more aware in our physical bodies, in our present moment. We have an opportunity to kind of reevaluate our physical realms. Uh, we have to gain our bearings. Now, keep in mind, we're still very much under the influence of eclipse energies. Yes, the full moon in Scorpio will close the door on that full moon lunar eclipse in Libra that we had about a month ago, but the new moon total solar eclipse in Aries energy is still alive and well until we move into May we have that new moon in Taurus and again Mercury retrograde well we're still under the influence of that so things aren't as clear they're not as stable they're not as defined as we wish they would be however we're given the opportunity coming into Taurus season just to slow down to become a little bit more present. Now we do have to kind of be aware that Taurus season, if we go too slow, we could actually just do nothing at all. We could become very uh, lazy, procrastinate, if you will. The whole goal is to take a slow and steady approach to first of all, reevaluating what needs to go, what needs to end, what needs to die in order for us to create the space to build, to create, to give birth to something new. This Taurus season is about creation. It's about the physical form, our physical reality. But in order for us to figure out where it is that we're going, we have to clean up the mess from where it is that we're coming from. And again, we are going to have to have a little bit more patience than any of us were born with, with this particular process unfolding, because we have to get through this full moon in Scorpio energy, see what's left over that, because they're definitely expecting some unexpected events to pop off, especially with this Jupiter and Uranus conjunction. Um, the full moon in Scorpio is going to be deeply transformative, even though it's going to be super intense on the shadow work. And then, like I previously mentioned, Mercury will go direct. The good thing about Mercury going direct, not only is that going to mean that maybe I have control of my, my tongue back um, and my words back and my brain isn't so cluster aft. I could only wish clarity for all of us. Um, but the post retrograde shadow period that we're usually in for like two weeks prior or po prior and post, I guess, uh, to Mercury's shifting, um, we're not going to really wait around too long for that shadow period to clear out. We're in Aries energy. It's a fire starter. We have ideas that we need to kind of take action and initiate upon. However, Mercury going direct is giving us a couple of days to get our mind right to get focused, to concentrate, to iron out the details, if you will, of our plans, of our path, of our strategy prior to Venus and Mars shifting into their rulership. That is going to be a major, major energy balancing effort. 
Um, but with this, again, slow and steady wins the race. And therefore, there's going to be a lot of friction, I feel. Uh, our physical bodies are going to feel much heavier than they normally do. That's ha That happens in an earth sign. Um, that happens when we need to be present and kind of in alignment with our physical forms. Keep in mind, guys, like the new version of self just popped out. And that was an energetic shift. Now we have to kind of like weld the mind, body, and soul equation back together. And that's why we're feeling heavy. We're feeling weighted. We're feeling a little bit slow. We're going to feel that in our bones, in our structure, in our ability to actually get up and to get going. We do have to avoid that laziness. Um, the Taurus energy, because we're kind of, you know, all up in the physical realm, uh, we want creature comforts. And that means food cravings are likely going to change. We have to watch out that we don't overindulge, which is a high probability, not only of Taurus season, but we got Jupiter in this Taurus energy as well. And so, you know, just stuffing our faces with the worst kinds of foods, we want to avoid that. Um, but our dietary needs are changing. Our cravings are changing as well. Our digestive system is changing. There might be a little bit of a slowdown there, creating some indigestion, some acid reflux, some constipation on the other end if we're not careful. But overall, we're just kind of, we're watching the bodily system slow down, shift and stabilize. That's what this earth energy is all, all about. Now, I also want you just to be a little bit aware that the energy of Taurus season, again, Venus is in charge. So we're all tapping into our, let's call it feminine goddess energy, which means that we have to be a little bit more receptive. We have to kind of go with the flow. We have to really let our heart space lead. However, there is going to be a certain, let's call it tough love life lesson where we're building in our self-worth as well, our self-love. And we have to do this building because again, Taurus energy is about building. We have to build our inner realm up so that we feel well-equipped and well-prepared to actually take action and make moves when these green light go-aheads start popping off here towards the end of the month and definitely blazing a path as we move into May. This particular, let's call it alignment into our physical bodies, it does tend to feel very uncomfortable sometimes. Any kind of change, any kind of adjustment does. However, we are going to be gaining our bearings, gaining a new footing, really reevaluating what we want, need, and desire. And we are going to be given the green light go ahead to take action, although very low, very slow, very steady, into a different direction. Now, we also have to understand that, you know, Earth Day, they call it Earth Day on the 22nd. It's it's semi appropriate that we have Earth Day in Taurus season. That's good. You know, Taurus season is Mother Earth. Venus is, you know, Mother Earth to a certain extent. This is what we are building and creating in. And we also have to understand that Earth, Gaia, Mother Earth, she's going through the ascension process like as you know her own being and that and we're just along for the ride and that's why we're kind of doing what we're doing here but there's a glow up a boss up in our self-worth in our values in our wants needs and desires that always happen when we get grounded enough and present enough and whole enough to take a good look around and be real and raw and vulnerable and honest with what we're no longer in alignment with what it is that we want to do what we want to pursue from here Problem is, is that we're not going to be able to articulate it or understand it until after Mercury goes direct. And because of that, many of us are having issues with our throat, with our voice, with post nasal drip. Why? Because, well, there is this essence where we're waiting for Mercury to go direct to get a lot of shit off of our chest, so to speak. We've been holding a lot in. We've been trying to, you know, dabble in our thoughts and our emotions. We have to clear the air in certain situations. We have a lot that we want to do, that we want to achieve, that we want to initiate, that we want to act upon. But the time is not yet. And so we're kind of trapped. All this energy is kind of stuck in our throat space. Um, I know many people that have like allergy symptoms, but not enough or not, let's say, cohesive enough to actually label them allergies. And again, you know, yes, there are physical labels and physical reasons for some of the symptoms that, you know, we step back and say, is this ascension symptoms or is this the cold? Is this the flu? Is this allergies? What is this? Uh, they're all kind of interwoven, you know, energetics 
is what we're talking about when we talk about ascension symptoms, but those energetics get blocked in our physical form, creating physical ailments that again, we can label such as cold, flu, allergies, whatever the case may be. There's a lot of breaking up of phlegm coming out of the heart space, coming out of the lung space, coming out of the chest space. These are heart activations. Venus, who rules over the heart space, yes, she's in her rulership and Taurus energy, but she's still in Aries energy, fire sign. The fire sign is attempting to kind of, let's say, dry up a lot of the heavier, more emotional emotions, uh, a lot of the sadness, a lot of the grief, a lot of the confusion, all of those things. And then, you know, she's about to take her rulership in Taurus energy here on the 29th. Again, if you haven't listened to the April energy forecast or downloaded your individual Zodiac forecast, I'm going to recommend you do so. We are at the most exciting point in April, as far as I'm concerned. Eclipse season was its own thing, but we're starting to pick up momentum now and actually see the tangible consequences of the energy shifts that we just went through. So those individual Zodiac forecasts are there for your downloading pleasure so that you can understand where these events are taking place in your life, where you can start connecting the dots start seeing the greater grander vision and picture of what all of this craziness and chaos is supposed to be orienting you into. So definitely take a listen to that. But all of these, let's call them physical ailments are consequences of the energetic shift that we just went through. And because we're kind of, you know, squeezing all of the energy that we just expanded upon back into the physical form, there's going to be aches and pains, there's going to be a certain element of discomfort, but we are going to sell into it. So so don't think that this is going to last for the entirety of Taur Taurus season, but we just dipped our toe into Taurus energy. So we have to expect the fallout or the death or the ending or the closure or the end, like the, the, the finality of what we just moved out of. That's the first part of Taurus. The middle part of Taurus is where we gain our bearings, where we gain our balance. We finally know what we're closing the door on and where it is now that we're going to start building and creating something new. And then towards the end of Taurus season, that's when the building and creation will actually be tangible, will actually be in the physical realm. So as you can kind of, you know, understand, there is a huge energetic shift when we're building, when we're creating a huge impact on the physical body, when we're putting forth that much physical energy. And Taurus season is a time for us to roll up our sleeves, for us to get our hands dirty when we have a path, a plan, a strategy that not only our heart and our head are in alignment with, but that we actually have the options and opportunities in our physical realm to put hands on and do something about. Speaking of hands, our hands are probably going to feel a little bit sore, a little bit cracky, a little bit rigid, but they're also sweaty as F. Sweaty palms, sweaty, let's call them bottoms of our feet as well. And this is just because the energy is shifting and keep in mind that especially your feet, the feet is what connects us to mother earth and mother earth. She's going through her own little birthday here on earth day. Um, but she's also going through her energetic evolvement. And that means that because our feet are what connects us to the earth. And again, reminder, you're nothing but a medium, a channel for the a conduit, if you will, for the energy coming from the cosmos through our physical forms, going through the earth. And of course, coming from the earth, going through our physical forms, going back to the collective, back to the cosmos. So our energetic connection to the earth, to the ether is also changing. Again, we've already expanded on our soul selves, on our energetic selves. Now they're being stuffed back into the vessel, into the physical form, into our physical body. And therefore, this is why we're going through the physical changes that we will be going through throughout Taurus season. I want you to pay attention to itchiness. Now, I mean itchiness, like it kind of feels like there's bugs on us or hair on us, or maybe, I know I used this before, but you know, when you're kind of feeling like you walk through an energetic cobweb and you're just trying to get the cobweb off of your face or wherever it is on your body that you're feeling this sensation. Again, this is energetic reverberations of trying to fit our expansive, uh, expanded or expansive energy form, our soul self, back into the physical body. But even more than that, the itchiness will likely be taking a little bit more, let's call it, of a powerful area in our bodies in between our shoulder blades and on the very base of our neck. And that is a good indicator that, first of all, we're healing because itchiness is healing. 
um, that we're healing some past issues. Anything that has to do on the back of your body is related to the past. Anything on the front of your body is related to the future. And so because we're coming out of this initiation energy here in Aries season in an eclipse energy, we are healing certain aspects from the past. So the itchiness, those cobwebs, that really weird, you know, sensation likely going to be on the back, especially at the nape of the neck, even more so than normal. Um, that neck energy, again, we have new, let's call it creative force energy, kundalini energy, whatever it is that you feel more comfortable labeling it as, uh, coursing through our bodies at this point in time. And of course, the neck is the, let's call it conjunction point between the 33 vertebrae of our spine, Jacob's ladder, if you will, where the Kundalini spirit has to come up from the base of our spine, the root chakra, all the way to the pineal gland that of course creates this, let's call it biological chemical explosion in our headspace that allows us to reach new levels of vibrations and frequencies of awareness of consciousness. And this is again, the energy kind of very low, very slow, very steady building up from the base of our root chakra up towards the spine, kind of getting locked in, if you will, in the shoulder blades, in the nape and the neck. A lot of that is because Venus has a lot to, a lot of work to do here in her rulership. A lot of heart activations, a lot of clearing out to do, a lot of building up to do. And so this is the, I'm going to say the targeted area where we're going to feel a lot of those activations the most. Um, dry puffy sore lips this kind of goes into the whole throat voice phlegm nasal drip thing there's just a lot of pressure from the neck up and i'm gonna say the torso if you kind of break your body up like i look at it this way like from your crown to the base of your neck that's one area because of course that's like the throat chakra the third eye the crown so that's like metaphysical knowledge intellect you know out there if you will uh, the torso being, you know, the heart chakra, the solar plexus, the sacral, the root. Well, that's kind of like, you know, what connects us to the higher realms and what connects us to this lower earthly realm. And then from like your hips down to your feet, like that's the connector energy. Like if we were, if we had an extension cord, that would be the part of the extension cord that we're plugging into the earth, so to speak. So when you break it down that way, there's definitely a lot more pressure in, I'm going to say the heart chakra up to the crown and the hard part of the heart chakra down to the bottoms of the feet is that there's a new electrical impulse coming in from mother earth, from Gaia herself. And the extension cord is just holding a little bit more heat, holding a little bit more discomfort, if you will, more than normal. And we're having a hard time adjusting to that. And so, you know, the, the dry, puffy, sore lips, yes, that is like throat chakra energy. It is, you know, we have a lot to say. We can't get it out of our bodies. We can't get it out of our headspace as of yet. That will come after, you know, Mercury goes direct. But there is like this, this element of just feeling a little bit, I'm going to say puffy and and not puffy like we're taking on water weight, puffy as in like, you know, when you are using your hands or your fingers for a very long time and then they get sore and they're like, you know, all swelled out and red and it just, you know, the sensation of touching things just becomes that much more intense. It's that kind of vibe. But when we're talking about like, you know, our facial features, if you will, the visual changes of our face definitely going to slow down. Thank you for those of you that have dropped comments and left behind little details that I'm not the only one going through the actual visual image changes of who I am, of what I look like in the mirror. We're all going through it. It's a beautiful thing. We're all in this together. It's a beautiful reminder. Sometimes if you're feeling alone and isolated, please come back and scroll through the comments section, especially on these Ascension forecast videos. This will just reassure to you that you're not cray cray. You're sure as hell not alone going through all this cray cray stuff on your own. We're all going through it. But the visual changes of our physical form, yeah, that's going to slow down a little bit, but the visual changes in our eyes. So we're seeing things from a different set of eyes, a different perspective. And right now it's going to feel like our eyes are dry, like we got dirt in our eyes, sand in our eyes, that there's a little bit of grittiness there. Why? Because we still aren't seeing things as clear, clearly as we would like. There's still a lot of debris holding up the greater, grander path and vision and direction in which we're going to be walking. And because of that, and because of our central nervous system kind of adapting to the new, let's call it visual effects, 
um, audio effects. You know, when we go through an upgrade, a recalibration in our soul and our spirit, the sensory input of our central nervous system kind of gets jacked up as well. And so right now we're just trying to adjust. And again, the first part of Taurus season is a harsh adjustment because we're stuffed back into our vessel, into our physical form. The expansion that we've gone through in our soul selves, in our energetic selves is exponential. And here we are cramming it back into a small, heavy ass meat suit. Doesn't feel good. And see, the eyes are a little bit gritty. And even more than that, all of this pressure in our headspace, not only is it likely going to invite that headache worm back into our headspace, that traveling headache worm that is just so creepy when you actually start tracking it through your headspace. And again, if you are paying attention here, look up the cranial nerve map. The cranial nerves in our head attaches to certain areas of our body. And so if you have a certain amount of pressure, a headache building or this, you know, headache worm, if you will, this traveling headache worm set up in a specific area of your headspace, look up the cranial nerve map, see where it's connecting to, see the body part that it's connected to. And then, you know, take it even further. What does that body part actually do in your physical form? What is the energetic purpose of that body part? This is going to kind of connect the dots help give you a little bit more of a, let's call it direction, a path for you to be experimenting with on how you're going to unlock some of these energies, because that's all these ascension symptoms are, are energetic blockages that are manifesting as discomfort, as ailments in the physical form. So not only are we going to have this headache worm back, but I'm going to give you this. We are going to have bobblehead syndrome. That's right. You know exactly what I mean. You know, those bobbleheads where their heads are just way bigger than their bodies and they're just jammed into some kind of tune that we can't hear. Our heads are going to feel way bigger than normal. Why? Well, because our intelligence, our awareness, our consciousness is way too big for our physical forms right now. We're trying to stuff it in and manipulate it, get it back in there. It's like going on vacation and trying to get all your stuff back in that suitcase and you just don't know how it ever fit in there the first time around. You know it did because you packed it, you brought it here, but how are we going to get it back to our original destination? It makes no sense. We always have way more stuff in that suitcase going back home than we do actually getting to our destination. Same kind of vibe. We are going to have bobblehead because the bobblehead syndrome Again, our perspectives aren't quite straight as of yet. It will get there. It will kind of settle down. And, you know, like I talked about, I think it was last week, how everything kind of looks fake, like everything kind of feels like the Truman Show. It's going to become a little bit more real. Now, considering the fact that we just had a major upgrade, major alterations to the matrix system itself, which is the energetic grid lines that, of course, net over our Earth plane and therefore have us in a certain limiting, restrictive type of, you know, construct, the matrix lines themselves, the energetic grid in which we're living in, this is what we're trying to collapse in order to free us to kind of, you know, do our own thing and to be our own sovereign beings yet again. And we are, you know, every single time we collapse the timeline, we are also altering the, let's call it binary code that keeps this energetic matrix grid alive and well. And so the matrix grid has changed. We have changed. Now we just need to get back in alignment so that we feel a little bit more comfortable, a little bit more familiar in our surroundings. But that Truman Show aspect where everything felt like a movie set, where everything felt fake as F, that is likely going to become more and more familiar, more and more comfortable. The further we get into Taurus season, this is like the amalgamation, if you will, of, of like settling Mother Earth, settling the physical realm, settling our physical bodies back into place for this next chapter, for this next timeline. And so again, the first part of Taurus season is the major adjustment where we are being crammed back in the physical body, where we do have to learn how to maneuver under these new kind of, you know, major coatings, if you will. And then by the time we actually enter into Gemini season, uh, we're going to be definitely more comfortable, more familiar, more grounded, more rooted, more, I'm going to say centered. And then Gemini season, not that I want to get too ahead of myself here, but is also going to be a banger of a season because that's when the options come. That's when the opportunities come. We have a major event between, you know, technically Jupiter moving into Gemini season uh, and Gemini energy for the next year ish taking place in May. And so that in itself is going to be a huge expansion 
after we gain our footing, after we gain our bearings. The whole purpose of Taurus season is to get grounded, to get in alignment, to get in alignment with our authentic selves, to really get to know ourselves again, to gain our footing, gain our bearings, create a new structure, create a new foundation, so that when we have a lot of things thrown at us, which trust me, Gemini season, there's gonna be a lot of information, a lot of choices, a lot of options thrown at us, that we're able to actually operate and choose from our real, true, raw, authentic selves. So right now we're just cramming the energy back into the vessel. We need to stabilize, we need to get comfortable, we need to get familiar before we move into Gemini season. So that Truman show, the reality will become a little bit normal reality. You know, the materialistic realm because of the major coding now shifting is going to solidify. That's what earth energy is all about, kind of cramming everything back together into a state of wholeness, into a state of completion. This is the new clean slate that we're going to be operating from. And because this new version of self just came out to play, this is an opportunity through Taurus season in order to center ourselves, really get in alignment with our heart space, with our wants, with our needs, with our desires, with our creator force energy to build to create, to bring new things to life. Okay, so the oiliness that we've been going through. So backtrack, this is like, I think we're going on at least a month now. Um, it happened towards the end of Pisces season because Pisces season is the, let's call it re-lubrication that goes on through the realignment, recalibration of our soul and our spirit. And then Aries energy brings us back to life and kind of expands on new spark, new fires, new flames for inspiration, motivation, determination to actually bring something new into form. And this is what we're doing in Taurus season is bringing those ideas, those inspirations into form, into matter, into this physical, tangible realm. The oils, you know, so if you were naturally oily before you dried out, and if you were naturally dry before, your oily is F in your hair, in your face, in your earwax, everything of the sort. The oils are going to return to semi-normal. However, we're never going back to what once was. There is going to be an alteration and adjustment just a tad. So let's say, for example, that you were on the dry side of things and then all of a sudden your hair, your face got oily as F. That oil, that oil situation is going to dissipate, but you will not go back to your natural dryness. There is an adjustment here that is taking place. So uh, we have to expect that, yeah, we are going to see the oils kind of, you know, normalize a bit, but this is going to be our new oil normal, if you will. And again, a lot of that is just the relubrication that needs to take place to get our energetic selves back into our vessel without as much friction as possible. We need that lubrication. It's just like an oil change in your car. Pay attention to that earwax though, that's a good indicator. Sure, you can look at your hair, you can look at your face, but that earwax is is the, I'm gonna say the true indicator of where you know the oils are trying to adjust and where they're trying to normalize. Um, let's talk about the teeth for a second. Yes, teeth adjustments, teeth pain, there's a lot of mouth issues going on. We talked about that th through the voice, the throat, the phlegm, the nasal drift, the, you know, the puffiness of the lips or whatever. Those fuzzy ass sweaters are coming back to visit our teeth again. This is not going to be the funnest. And yep, I did say funnest, uh, but it is what it is. We are no stranger to this particular ascension symptom. And it's likely going to, and I know this sounds really weird, uh, but what comes out of my mouth that doesn't sound weird at this point. Um, our mouth is going to taste like dirt, literal dirt. Like we were just, you know, chomping down on some good old dirt out in the yard. Um, we're in an earth energy right now. And it's like we uh, we were flying high. Yeah, albeit scatterbrained and all over the place in Aries season. But like the, the, the brick wall that we kind of feel like we hit when we come out of a fire season into the earth season. It's like we smack dab our faces down on the earth. And then we kind of realize that some of that got in our mouths. So the fuzzy sweaters are definitely coming back, but there is going to be a sensation where we literally taste dirt in our mouths. Um, I have no clue why. I just know that that's what they told me and I asked and they just said Taurus season. I said, okay. So this is what we're dealing with. We're dealing with fuzzy sweaters and we're dealing with a dirty, gritty mouth experience. Doesn't that sound lovely? Can't wait for that. 
Okay, so the sleep, the dreams. First of all, Taurus season should have us all sleeping a little bit more comfortably, a little bit longer, a little bit more soundly, if you will. However, keep in the back of your mind, we have some major energetics popping off throughout Taurus season that will likely disrupt a couple of days prior to on and post these major events taking place. But nonetheless, sleep should return to somewhat a comfortable level. Now, the dreamscape, mind you. Mm. Okay, so the dreamscape is going to be a little bit wild just because we're trying to gain our bearings. What that means is, is that when you fall asleep, if you're entering into the astral realms, first of all, the astral realms are going to be like a mission. It's like a, a role playing game and everybody seems to know what the mission is except for you and you have to piece it together like your damn blues clues. OK, um, secondly to that, a lot of the dream content isn't as crazy, isn't as oh, there isn't as wackadoodle as it once was. It's like we are going and living a, another very normal life in the astral realm, but when we come back into our physical bodies, when we wake up, it is going to take a huge amount of extra time in order for us to feel awake, for our soul and spirit to come back into our vessel in the appropriate way and to actually get up and go in the mornings. So again, just think earth energy just slows everything down. You know, we're supposed to be slowing down and smelling the roses and focusing in on the smaller little beautiful things that, you know, make our realm and reality actually look good and feel good and make us feel safe and secure. Um, but, you know, it's hard enough to wake up in the mornings, I would say. And I feel like it's going to be even more challenging, especially when we're getting that deep restful sleep for our physical bodies to go into repairment mode while we're off gallivanting, saving the world in other dimensions. And so I guess what I'm saying is, is that it's, it takes a little bit longer for our soul and our spirit to get in alignment when the physical body wakes up, when we're coming out of this restful, deep sleep. So definitely pay attention for that. And pay attention to how the dreamscape is changing, what the mission is, how it's like real life circumstances kind of, you know, just being brought to life in a different dimension, if you will. There's not as weird concepts. It's very down to earth, very realistic, but it's almost like we have a to do list, but we don't know where the to do list is. And everybody else in our dreamscape seems to know what the to do list is and nobody's telling us. And again, we just have to act as the detective and kind of, you know, observe and try to make sense of it and just kind of like go with the flow. But we're definitely on a mission in different dimensions. So the last thing that I'm going to talk about is the extreme nature of the intensity of our emotions that we are going to experience over this next week. Now, a lot of this, first of all, is being triggered and activated by Jupiter and Uranus's conjunction. Jupiter, again, turns the volume all the way up on whatever is going on. Uranus, the great awakener, likes to shock us, disrupt us, throw wild card energies at us, wrenches in our plans, everything of the sort. But again, just keep in mind that this 14 year conjunction is closing out a cycle and opening up a new one, but we are going to feel everything magnified. Jupiter, Jupiter, Jupiter magnifies everything. He's a little bit dramatic, a little bit extra. Um, kind of reminds me of the Hamburglar from McDonald's. I don't know if you're all are old enough to remember that. I probably just dated myself. That's okay. But, you know, he was a joyous character. He was a happy dude, but he was big. He was large. He had a big presence. And that is very much Jupiter. And I think that the intensity is coming because here we get everything magnified and then we dive right into a full moon in Scorpio. And Scorpio energy is intense as F anyways. Um, definitely turning the volume up on the darkest parts of us that we have to let go of. And again, you know, I am going to encourage you to join the whole moon guide when I launch it and when I publish it for this particular event. If you want to subscribe, that's definitely the most I'm going to say efficient, cost efficient way to get all the information in you. Um, but let me just also say that it is a very interesting uh, chart to look at. 
and there are very minimal aspects taking place under this full moon in Scorpio, but the ones that are taking in place are so freaking intense. They're so transformative, mostly because Pluto, who rules over the Scorpio energy, is involved in most of them. And this is going to turn the volume up on the growing pains. So again, I know I previously mentioned this, but every single time that we level up, every single time that we expand, every single time that there's a major glow up in our energy, and then we're shoved back into this physical vessel, we have to kind of change the parameters, the boundaries of how it is that we're operating. And the minute that we identify from our higher self, that there's a new mission, new truth, new purpose, new quest, new adventure opening up for us. We get excited. We get inspired. We, we're motivated. We want to do all of those things. However, the egoic programming conditioning kicks in. And that is when the fears, the doubts, the insecurities try to prevent us from actually aligning with this new path. And this is what this full moon in Scorpio is going to be all about. And on top of the compounding magnification of the intensity and extreme thoughts and ideas coming from Jupiter and Uranus's conjunction, let me just say we're all going to have to put our energetic helmets on. We're all going to have to strap ourselves in. I do expect the full moon in Scorpio to be an absolute doozy. And so because of that, this is the inner emotional, inner intuitive, inner spiritual change, transformation and shift that is needed to prepare us for this next chapter. But of course, growing pains never feel good. And I know we talked about the, let's call it discomfort taking place in our lower extremities. Definitely pay attention to the rigidity taking form to your kneecaps popping off, to your ankles cracking around that full moon in Scorpio because we trap fear in our lower extremities. Again, just think of when we're ready to take a step forward in a new path, in a new direction, you have to use your feet in order to do it. And so it would make sense that maybe our head space and our heart space, our upper realms, our upper chakras are in alignment to making these changes that we've already taken time to visualize. However, when you go to engage the physical body and you actually have to move and put one foot in front of the other, that's when things get real. That's when things get serious. And that is when the fear creeps up and prevents us from actually taking those initial steps forward. So we are likely going to feel a lot of friction in our lower extremities, especially in that root chakra, considering the fact that again, we're trying to, you know, get rid of the heavier weights, the heavier thoughts, the heavier emotions and our egoic programming. Uh, that root chakra is the fear, is the doubt, is the survival program that we have that runs our biological physical system. And so we have to expect that popping off, maybe some sciatic nerve issues, maybe some lower back pain, uh, definitely stemming down the legs and, you know, highlighting where it is that we're gaining a little bit of momentum towards making a move. But we're also gaining in hesitation and resistance because of the fears, the doubts, the insecurities popping up in our egoic programming, preventing us from growing, from evolving, from reaching our potential. Are we going to let it win? Absolutely not. Are we going to grin and bear it? Absolutely we are. Are we going to be better off after these particular events? 100% we are, but we do have to grow through what it is that we're currently going through. Okay, guys, I think that's all that I want to cover for this week. I thank you so much for being here. I thank you so much for showing up for me. I thank you so much for showing up for yourself. And of course, I'm sending you nothing but love. We'll talk to you soon.